Hello, this is Empress, and we're starting back on with Colonel Sanders. Good old Colonel Sanders. We had just made our love confession, and trying to continue things slow. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. This should be the third and final day of school, so maybe we'll finish this up. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. You think about the new secret ingredient you just learned about. Blank. In some jurisdictions, blank isn't even legal. But if the recipe is a secret, how will they know? Tss, what ingredients are that even? Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast, and your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's ridiculous. Ooh. No, this is making me so hungry right now. Totally getting some chicken later. You taste Colonel Sanders' food, and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So, would you say we're the perfect match? How presumptuous. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Such confidence, such great, such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? Flatter him. You know... I think we might be a great team. A single tear because the pool in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one more day of school, after all. The University of Cooking School Academy for Learning waits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? I... Because I had one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something had happened to you. It's okay, I was just... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get up to speed on the saga of Miriam. Sure, but you will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date. I think I can believe that. Since I've been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Of course I told him you better keep your dials turned polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure, I can get to know a little metallic guy. But is he Metallica? Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends, but things quickly spiraled out of control. Did you just say skydiving as if that's a typical first date to go on with a talking pressure cooker? And now I'm not really sure where we stand. You don't give Miriam time to tell her the whole story, however. Modeling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date, too, back to Colonel Sanders' house where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened, but the emotional connection. Wowzers. Miriam tells you to move on from Colonel Sanders' obsession and focus on school. <laughs> if being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, then you don't want to be right. After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from a distance they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite grasp that fact. Because, you know, he's Pop. It's like, what's a swirly? It sounds delicious! Like, oh, it's great. I'll order you up one right away. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. Ha <laughs> sprinkles is a dog and a treat. You can get your swirly dip, too. Say, so why don't you pick on someone your own size? Because I'm literally the biggest person at the school. <laughs> it's like, there is that horse that Colonel Santa rides to school, but who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? You've got some nerve, Empress, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. Now you're twisting my words, and I won't have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince in pain. Doesn't look like you could go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up, bruh. I'll never give up. Ever! Colonel Sanders arrives just as it appears things are close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Empress, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back to finding form by this afternoon. Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. 
Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? But what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. That's a lot of words to say it was bland. <laughs> Excuse me, Empress. I am more than capable enough to speak for myself. Maybe you can tell me more about, of your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine food. See you inside, Empress. Annoyed by Colonel S oh, Sanders' inability to she see Ashley for who she you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you received yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa! That's, what's that book? It looks like bad news. It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? I can think of one surefire way to find out. You open to a page covered in arcane warnings. Cast only in case of extreme emergency, it says around the edges of the page. I could use the spell here that says it'll erase anyone I choose from all my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. That is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else, like anything else, not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine, it is drastic, but desperate times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you, and you're a pretty good excuse to try it out. No. Don't forget about Colonel Sanders. Besides, black magic is not to be trifled with. You take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room, waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice to begin a quick announcement. I want you all to know I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. He must be hungry. Reach for some old homework and give him a snack. Dogs can be rather unpredictable, especially Sprinkles. Wait to see what happens. Sprinkles stops in his tracks. He focuses on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched in the cherry tree outside. Sprinkles turns feral and runs to the window in the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. Terrence! I told you never to come back here, Terrence! I will destroy you, Terrence! Oh, apparently this is an ongoing feud. Sprinkles is barking ferociously, drool flying off his face. The squirrel looks over, but he doesn't say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? You better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again! After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel in hearing distance, he returns to his professional tone. Ahem, I apologize for the outburst. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Empress, for reminding me to doll out this uh, doll out this indisposable bit of wisdom, you see. But before he can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the glass. Sprinkles is interrupted by whirs and sparks coming from the back of the room. I told you to save it for after class! Bzz, bzz. They getting they getting frisky there? I don't know what to say to that. You think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. Roar. But no, you had to show off your cool kid friends, Jeff and Joan. J and J forever. Watch us from a triangle in midair as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Bzz, bzz. Yeah, well, that doesn't make it a great date. <laughs> He's so sad. Then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff for all I care. Oh no, sad beep. Why sad beep? Miriam, Miriam, why are you so mean to him? Clank begins to shudder. Steam pours out of the gaps in his panels, and then a loud ding pop stops him in his tracks. Oh no! It, it, he didn't die of a broken heart, did he? Beep, beep. No amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that, Clank. Clank burps out a completely deep-fried sneaker. <laughs> Considering that he himself has wheels, not feet, it's not entirely clear where it came from. 
In terms of deep fried footwear, I look, guess it looks okay. Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see the entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the final day of school. Well, that was unfortunate. But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam! TM. I'm still working out the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena! But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam, you okay? Okay? I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor! How could he embarrass me in class like that in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure. So you know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're going to cruise through the final test and hit the carpool lanes of Success City. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. You're not going to saddle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me? Of course not. Well, maybe, sort of. But I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it, and a, and a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. If it's not Pop or Clank or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first someone who shows who a little interest anyhow. Yeah! Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. And I bet that Professor Dog is going to love it up. While you're pep-talking Miriam, you completely miss lunch, but that's okay because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. You decided to head the arena early to practice a dish. This is it, the location of your final challenge. A test of will, a test of courage, a test of talent and a chance to beat the pants off of Van Van, the supposed man-man, and his evil-er counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on, Empress's famous chicken pot pie. After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. The flower petals just follow him everywhere. Empress, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. It's like, oh, just taking it all in? I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing the victory. The pot pies begin to bake, and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. You're usually happy to share your food with anyone who's hungry, but last time you let Colonel Sanders get it into your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decided it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but that decision is hard to stick to when the oven timer goes off behind you. Fess up. Ah, fess up about your practice dish. I don't want to ruin it. Like there was no sound at all. No. Okay, okay, you got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know. My nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. That's an oddly specific distance, but you expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You knew it was pot pie just from the smell. Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all-butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? Haha, <laughs> no. I can smell it was made with a heaping helping of TLC. But it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth. Wow. Ooh, my god, it's delicious looking. Ah. Why are you making me hungry, game? It's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I always love country cooking, and I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lay down the ground rules. There are no rules. That is, except to cook with everything you've got. Oh, all right. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just the dishes that'll push you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are preparing a widely elaborate dishes, per their usual over-the-top selves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely preparing to go oh, big going small. 
Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his eleven herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe fried chicken. The intensity in the room is at full ten out of ten, with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, it's getting serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it, as it levitates through the air. Egg wash! <laughs> Egg wash. So Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty-bitty pot of broth. Best friend, baster blaster! Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and ride! Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula! Even Clint gets in on it. Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique! Did you just... When did Craig learn how to speak English? It's like, it's the singularity was... Uh, it's the singularity, as was foretold. We mustn't let it happen, or the appliance uprising will take us all. It's like self-destru... Van quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out of the back door in the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. She'd take the opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic. I'm going to do it the hard way, because that's what Colonel Sanders said to do. Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm going to do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms, and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. I believe in you, Empress. Miriam notices, too. And I've always believed you, Empress, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station, cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're cheering, who's cooking? Tiny food, short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. It's the secret ingredient! However, she doesn't know that you lied about the ingre that the ingredient was made up. And where in the world did she get the eye of Newt from? The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin swirling in the air, bubbling up in dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. It is I, Steve the Spork Monster! Steve? Wait, what happened to Gorko? You're not here to battle me, are you? We spork monsters are many. I think Gorko had the day off. But you conjured Steve, and I hate to battle, so I'd say you're doing pretty all right. Oh, hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve the spork monsters notices that you've got the grimoire stashed beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscross some magic items and accidentally summoned me, huh? Ha, yeah, you guessed it, sorta. If you're here, would you mind tossing me some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef, actually. You know, when I was just a little spork pup back in the old country. You can feel Spork Monster winding up to tell a very long and involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on this competition. I understand. It's kind of like that time in monster school that I had fallen asleep during scare tactics class, and when I woke up... You toss a serious stare at Steve, and he takes the hint. Never mind. I'll see you later. Good luck. Having suffered a huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win this. It's like, you summon extra power from deep down within yourself. I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win! Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for... It's like, Yes, Empress, you're the chosen one. You will avenge me. The power you've been summoning immediately fades back out. You interrupted my inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery! You begin to levitate off the ground. Energy courses through your body. You know that with this power, you can do anything. Except turn back time, which would be super useful, because while you're powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. But don't worry, dear Empress. You may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. 
All you've managed to make is mac and cheese, and time is almost up, so you're going to need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surprise their individual that surpass their individual efforts. Are you suggesting if we combine forces, we can form the perfect food union? Time's up, students. With time expired, it's the moment everyone has been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop, Clank. From off screen, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. Hehe, <laughs> I'm flying! Sounds like it's coming from that bloom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Inside the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastics of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now! Let me guess, did Van Van have something to do with this? When someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad! It looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing as how he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs. May I be excused? Sure. You kids and your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in UCSAL history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Pranks? Pranks? Clank! Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature word beep or other onomatopoeia, but there's none. Somehow, he must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please, collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long... Is that yes, it has been a long semester. Wow, three whole days long. But after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now, describe your dish. He's taking a little begging position. He's so, he's so happy. I made... Tender udon noodles in the savory soup. It's so tiny. My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny naru naru tomaki? I spy a float in its itsy bitsy bowl. Yes, chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles, and some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime! Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on. I'm not the one who... I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine. I'll enjoy it all by myself. In a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus. Rarely do I taste a dish with so much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Empress, for helping me believe in myself. Van Van, you're up. Now, describe your dish. I made uni over smooth egg custard with an axe, hewn urchin shell topped with caviar. Did you skewer one type of or or urchin with spines from a second, different colored type of urchin? Yes, Sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bitch munch is kind of my brand. Does it look cool? Sprinkle leans in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose close enough on account of all the spikes. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Woof, woof! Please be gentle with my cuisine. Grrr. Finally, Sprinkle goes all in, tongue first, but he doesn't get past all the needles. He reels black his tongue as it poked him. No! Ouch, my tongue! The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat this. It keeps poking my tongue. Disqualified. A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving uh, food in a bowl made of needles can make it difficult to eat? Dejected, Van Van does, does not go gentle into the night. Disqualified for glamour? Don't discount sympathy. <laughs> This is the last you've heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles most graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know. Yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley. It's time to step up. 
Now, describe your dish. I made orange blossom Turkish delight in a light rose water syrup topped with French meringue and connected with by a sugar glass. That does look nice, though. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ha I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the food at a cooking school. Get toast in your ears or something, Empress. I told you, it's a display piece. Actually, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cook it. I did an extremely good job cooking it, too. I didn't realize that we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to College of Eating, School for the Hungry. So I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insist, but don't breathe too hard. It might disrupt the sugar spiral. So if the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley as she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you! And with that, Ashley storms off to, to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. This isn't the last time you've heard of me, either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cook, step up together. Two chefs? What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. He examines closely, sniffing it and eyeing the bowl. Oh, that's the new mac and cheese bowl that just came out. Ooh, it looks delicious. I want to try it so bad. He examines it closely and sniffs and eyeing the bowl. Uh-oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just when I thought I've seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this, this thing. And completely blow me away. In my 49 years of life, I've never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. You pass, you pass, and you pass, and you're gonna pass. Okay, Oprah. Everyone gathers around and partakes in the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win! Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive that even the Van Van and Ashley are drawn back in by its majestic fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on, how could they be better than this one? Now that the school year, quote unquote, is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. Was this entire game literally just to advertise the chicken mac and cheese bowl? I never. The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. DJ Dog is in the house! Arr, 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 arr. Yeah, get it, Sprinkles. So you know that Sprinkles is the master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist? Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting wrongs they did while they were villains. Psss. Huh, it looked nice. <laughs> For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No ghosts allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. It wa I was never actually a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh, amusing. And now that everyone's together, it's the Spork Monster. He's totally mellowed out. Everyone, the Spork Monster is no more. From here out, I'd prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name, Party Monster. Students, student tries to finish what he had to say, but everyone's too wrapped up talking to Spork, sorry, Party Monster. Dejected, student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the, um, the love in her cooking, and you know she's going to do great. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who would command such an entrance? It's Pop. He's arrived late to the dance, but apparently for a good reason. Walking the carpet, you see perched atop his dirty chef hat. A crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma. 
so we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school dean. Oh, now I get it. And we get a new wing in the school, not to mention the honor of educating the son of the Chancellor such and such. The music in the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparkling and electrical hissing. It's Clink, who has arrived late to the dance. Now that I have graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank, and I am not of this earth. I am actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? What? I actually feel like I knew this whole time. <laughs> now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. I've just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clank. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear she has managed to suppress you in that regard. I understand. Kind of. Humans are weird. Oh, he's so sad. <laughs> it's okay, Clank. You'll find someone. Some point. A portal opens and Clank disappears through it. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Yeah, what gave it away? I don't know. Could be all these cherry blossom petals. Nah, can't possibly. Howdy, classmates. Ooh. Well, he changed his look. Just like the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time, it's a full meal. It's like, I didn't get to the most famous chicken man in history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. The end? <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, it's not the end! Oh, alright. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Empress, what are you doing sitting all alone? Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. I wonder, might you tell me, what are the qualities that you would expect to find in such a lucky person? <laughs> Off the top of my head, oh, I don't know, a spicy musk, a tidy goatee and a degree of and a degree from the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, just to name a few. It truly is my lucky day. Would you dance with me? Yes, I would love to. As you glide across the dance floor, hand in hand with Colonel Sanders, the music stretches out in front of you, or the future stretches out in front of you. I can read, I promise. And once my 100th franchise is up and running, I'll be ready to take a day off, and I'll be so glad to spend it together with you, Empress. How sweet. We'll work together and play together. Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Work together? Well, um, I think this is something I'll just need to do by myself. But who will help you run your restaurants? I don't believe I need help. Besides, based on your time at school here, do you really think running a restaurant is the best path forward? Could it be? You found a love connection but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef. Can you live with only half of him? Will you be able to endure sharing him with his other love and the life of an entrepreneur? Ah, uh, I guess I didn't do good enough on the quizzes. I suppose I could enroll in a pastry school? Oh, my dear Empress, I'm sure you'll find your place eventually. And along the way, you'll have me by your side. The end. All right, then. Well, that wasn't exactly the best ending I could have gone for. Probably because I got a few things wrong. Well, ah, that was... Okay, that that was loud. Why are the logos always so loud? Okay, let's not. <sighs> so, that was I Love You, Colonel Sanders, a finger-licking good dating simulator. I might try again to see if I can at least get the better ending. But for now, I bid thee adieu. Um, like, comment, and... Well... Subscribe? I'm lame. Okay. Alright, bye-bye.